much happy sabbath everyone happy sabbath. thank you so much for joining us it is good for us to be in the house of the lord it's a sunny day god has been good to us and we give him all the thanks the praises and the glory amen everyone amen. wonderful we're going to go right into our study for today we are in the book of genesis chapter 3 i'm going to invite you please to pray with me our topic is aprons from fig leaves. Aprons from fig leaves. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity of us being here together. Thank you for your holy Sabbath day. Thank you that we know in whom we believe. And we are pers persuaded that you are able to keep that which we have committed to you against that day. May your blessing be on everyone here today as we open your word, as we study your word. Have mercy on us and cause your holy will to be wrought in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everyone say, Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 25. Let's go there. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 25. Let's open our Bibles. It is time for us to look into the word as we study together. And prove all things from the word of God. Amen. <clears throat> when you're there, please say amen. <clears throat> the Bible says in Genesis 2 verse 25, And they were what? Oh, you're not there as yet. You're not ready for me as yet. Genesis 2 verse 25. Let's try again. And they were what? Naked. They were both naked. The man and his wife. And they were not what? Ashamed. They were not ashamed. Wonderful. Let's read it one more time. Genesis 2 and verse 25. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not, they were not ashamed. Wonderful. Now, friends of mine, this here, this scripture that we just read, is the last record that we have before man and woman sinned so after genesis chapter 2 verse 25 we go to chapter 3 which says the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field the serpent is now going out to meet with eve or eve wandered away to meet with him Last week we looked at the temptation and the fall. So we're not going to go too much into that. But we are looking at a reality that comes out from this part here uh, in Genesis chapter 3. Before man sinned, they were naked, both of them, and they did not know it. They did not realize it. Is that right? Yes. But... After they sinned, let's go to the record. What's, what happened here after they sinned? 
Genesis chapter 3, reading from verse 7. What did he say to us? And the eyes of them what? Both were what? Both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed, sewed fig leaves together and made themselves what? Aprons. So friends, here you have before sin. Were they naked before sin? Yes, they were naked before sin, but they did not know it. How is it that they didn't know it? Because they were covered with the love of God. They were covered with the righteousness of Christ. Amen, everybody? Amen. After they sinned, the righteousness of Christ, the covering, God's covering, could no longer linger with them, could no longer stay on them, because you can't mix God's covering with sin. And so because of this, after sin, they realized that they were naked. Can you imagine, friends of mine? They are now naked, and because of this, they were ashamed. They were sorry. They were disappointed. And now, they started finding ways to cover themselves. Why were they ashamed? They were not ashamed before sin because there was no sin on the earth. They were not ashamed because they were covered with what? What were they covered with? No. The righteousness of Christ. Let's jump to Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 10. In Isaiah 61 verse 10, we are told, my dear friends, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of what? Salvation. He hath he have covered me with the robe of what? Righteousness. Righteousness. Amen. As a bridegroom decketh herself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. Amen, somebody? Yes, friends. So it was the righteousness of Christ that covered Adam and Eve before they sinned. What happened after sin? We read it. We saw what happened after sin. They were what? Naked. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 3 one more time. This time we're going to read from verse 6. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6. It tells us, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a tree that was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took up the fruit thereof, did eat, gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. The Bible went on to say, with verse 7, which we read already, we read it again. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves apron. How did they meet God up to sin? So after they sinned, friends of mine, nakedness came upon them. They now try to cover their nakedness. They sought for a fig leaf or fig leaves and what did they make apron. they made apron now look what happened after this now let's take it from verse 9 as we follow the story carefully the lord came called unto adam and said unto him where art thou god didn't need to ask any questions before naturally the relationship with jesus was so beautiful the relationship with man and his creator was so lovely that naturally they would just be in tune with God. They knew the time. They knew the time he was to meet with them. And they had a lovely, beautiful, face-to-face -face communication with them. But now that sin has entered them, entered the world that God has blessed them with, now that they have chosen a new master do you know that's what we do friends of mine according to romans 6 when we sin we have chosen to be a slave to the master the devil himself is that right but righteousness keep us as servant to christ we have to know the difference 
Is that right? Now, so the eyes of them, sorry, they heard the voice of God uh, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord called Adam and said, Where are you? Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was what? Because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, God said to him, Who told you that you were, was naked? As you, uh, hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not, shouldest not eat? And the man said, blaming game start now. And the man said, <coughs> excuse me, unto the, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle, above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Our topic is aprons from fig leaves. Apron definition. According to the dictionary, defin the definition of apron is a protective gear that is used to cover the front of the body so from the dictionary definition we see where apron doesn't cover everything when adam and eve sinned their nakedness now exposed their they they became ashamed they sought for help and they chose to use to make an apron from fig leaves and the apron as we know was not enough to cover their whole body isaiah spoke about robe of righteousness does a robe cover the whole body yes. certainly a robe covered the whole body but they use aprons to cover their body they were on they only covered what was what was obvious to them but they did not cover the whole body Let's move on to see what happened after this. So friends of mine, after they sinned and they were afraid to go to God, we could look at several reasons why they were afraid to go to God. Number one, sin has now entered and new master is now, has now taken their heart. And so because the Bible says you cannot serve what? Help me that one. You can't serve two masters. You have to hate one and love the other. You, and because the new master is now taken over, they didn't have that desire towards God anymore. Number two, they, they now felt strange and started hiding from God because they were naked. That's not how God left them. And that's not how God desired them to be. And so because of all of this now, friends of mine, they now feel strange toward their God. Is that right? How did God cover them? That is important. Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make what? Coats of skins and clothe them. I want you to look at the difference. After sin, Adam and Eve chose fig leaves to cover themselves. Fig leaves only cover the obvious. Is that right? But God, in sending them out of the garden, after sin, He ensured to cover them with what? Robes or coats, the Bible says. He made coats of skin for them. And covered them. I want you to pay attention to that. In their sinful time, they chose fig leaves to cover themselves. When God is dealing with them, no wonder why Isaiah talk about he's covering 
is 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 robe of salvation amen god is not did not choose to cover them partly or cover their front or their back only god covered them holistically can somebody say amen, amen. let's move on so coat is defined as total covering fig leaves is part covering coat is total covering let's go to job 26 and verse 6 in job chapter 6 and verse 6 we are told he is naked before him and destruction has no covering that's interesting after sin man and woman became naked why why did why has sin caused them to be naked why has sin caused them to be exposed it is because friends of mine we are told from the word of god that he is naked before him and destruction has no covering it is the devil's desire to destroy to kill and destroy and one of the way he does this is through nakedness are you learning from the word of god today one of the way he does this is through what his through nakedness nakedness is a way a means of destruction i want you to listen today habakkuk chapter 2 verse 15 let's go there habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 15. the bible says Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink. Why, Lord? Why there's a woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink? And this drink is talking about strong drink. It's not talking about water or natural juice. It's talking about strong drink. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that putteth thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou, may, that thou mayest look on his nakedness. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 15. So God is against exposure of your body. God is against you be and I being naked. Of course, if you think about it, friends of mine, those who of course care about covering themselves properly you're only naked for just minutes of the day think about the few times that you go naked i knew that some people say whenever you're bathing taking a shower or a bath using the bathroom you name it changing your clothes maybe changing your 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 day clothes and going to bed do you notice how how sharp the naked period are think about it so god is so much against nakedness he's against nakedness then and he is today revelation chapter 3 let's go to revelation chapter 3 Revelation chapter 3, verses 17 and 18, it says, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment 
that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. So there you have it, friends of mine. Nakedness brings about shame. And anoint thyself with eyesalves, that thou mayest see. The Bible went on to say, in verse uh, 19, God says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. He said, Be zealous, therefore, and do what? And repent. Amen. So God, friends of mine, is not with nakedness. It's not for us going around exposing ourselves to the world. You believe that? So the question I want to ask, has God changed? Has God, God changed? Exodus chapter 26. Rather, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 26. What's God's instruction? Exodus chapter 20 and verse 26. The, the same chapter that deals with the commandment. Listen what the Bible says, friends of mine. Listen what the Bible says. I'm getting somewhere. Work with me. Listen what the Bible says to us. The Bible says, Neither shalt thou go up by steps upon mine altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. Where do you find altars? In worship. The church. So God is speaking to his people today. Ladies, God is speaking to you today. About your nakedness. About the way you should dress. Amen, somebody? So he said, you should make the altar a certain way that when you go upon it, your nakedness be not discovered. Now, friends of mine, if I'm to be honest with you today, there we have come to a period in time where you do not have to, some people do not have to step upon anything for their nakedness to be exposed. And it's a sad state. And God is not pleased. We have gone to a point where many are afraid to talk about this. But if God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then this is still important. Can we say amen? amen. And so dress code is required for all those who are God's people. Exodus chapter 28 and verse 42. I'm just studying the word of God. It says to us, friends of mine, And thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness from their loins even unto the thighs they shall reach. This is dealing with God's priest. He gave specific instruction as to how they ought to cover themselves. Leviticus chapter 18. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus chapter 18. Verses 6, 7, and 8. It says, friends of mine, None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. She is thy mother, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. The nakedness of thy sister, the, the daughter of thy father or the daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. The nakedness of thy son's daughter, the nakedness of thy father's wife, thou shalt not uncover. The nakedness of thy father's sister, Leviticus 18, one old chapter dealing with nakedness. Isn't that interesting? Did you know that? One old chapter, almost 50% of it is dealing with specifically nakedness. But friends of mine, today, the mothers, the fathers, 
the sisters, the brothers, everybody's on the street dressing naked. And that sounds like an oxymoron, you call it. Because they're hardly dressing anymore, so it's not dressing naked, it should be everybody out there naked. And that's a sad state, friends of mine. But you know, as God's people, we have a responsibility. Is that right, friends of mine? We have a responsibility and our duty is to the Lord. We are to answer to the Lord and we are to follow his instructions. I know for sure that when God gives instruction, there are reasons why he gives them. It is for our own good. Amen, everybody? And it's for our, our protection. You can hardly find the difference between the dance hall dress and the church dress today. Who sees that? Thank you very much. There's hardly a difference between the street dress and the church dress. There's hardly any difference today in church. But today I want to speak to the ladies who are serious about God and serious about following Him. And even the gentlemen also dress up. We see from the Word of God that it is Satan's intention for us to go naked. Especially ladies. It is Satan's intention for your exposure. Why is it like this? Why is Satan so adamant on nakedness? The truth is, nakedness kills. Nakedness does what? Nakedness kills. N nakedness is a murderer like Satan. What are you talking about, Pastor? John 8 verse 44, Jesus said he was a murderer from the beginning and so he still is. Is that right? Nakedness is a murderer and those, uh, especially ladies, who go around uh, exposing themselves, exposing what uh, only God should and themselves should know about, or exposing what only their husbands should know about, friends of mine, you are being set up by the devil to be a murderer. So, Pastor, are you telling me that to dress skimpy and to expose my body parts that should not be exposed, to go around dressing like I'm wearing an apron? Are you telling me that I'm a murderer when I do that? Yes, you are. How so? That's why the Bible wants you to go naked. Let's find out how. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. You should know that by heart. What does it say to us? It says, the wages of sin is... Come on, people. The wages of sin is what? The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Now help me now. Work with me now. What happened when a lady goes out there and is skimpy dressed? What happened to the males? Whether they are church men or not, what happened to them? It caused them to look. Is that right? It caused them to look and it caused them to, what's the L word? It caused them to look and then it caused them to lust. Is lust sin? Yes. Lust is sin. Jesus said, friends of mine, in, the, in, in Matthew, he said, listen to me. You do not only commit adultery, <coughs> excuse me, or fornication when you do the very act, but you commit adultery or fornication when you look at a woman and lust after her in your heart. Can we say amen? So lusting is sin, and sin lead to what? Death. To death. Yes, friends of mine. You know what? Let's go to the Bible. Let's look at this properly, friends of mine. So, ladies, with due respect, the devil has set up many of your kind to slaughter the men. To kill the men. To destroy their God-given role. 
It is in the world and it has crept and has moved and has moved so fast into church. And I pray that you will hear the voice of the Lord today. Ask yourself the question when you look in the mirror, when you go before the, the mirror and when you're putting on your, your clothes and when you're going into your closet, ask yourself the question, am I dressed to glorify God today or am I dressed to murder some men? How many men will I murder today by, with my dress? Now friends of mine, God didn't create you to be a murderer. The devil is a murderer. Do not be a follower of him. John chapter, let's open our Bibles. Let's go to the book of Numbers. We are going to study properly. Numbers chapter 11. Let's open our Bibles. Numbers chapter 11. And we read from verses 31 to 34. Open your Bibles. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers chapter 11. Verses 31 to 34. You found it, Shahar? Numbers chapter 11. Verses 31 to 34. The Bible says, friends of mine, And there went forth a wind from the Lord, and brought quails from the, from the sea, and let them fall by the camp, as it were a day's journey on this side. And as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth, and the people stood up. The, the people stood up all that day and all that night and all the next day. And they gathered the quails. He that gathered at least gathered ten omers. And they spread themselves abroad for themselves around about the camp. And while the flesh was between their teeth, as it were, it was strewed, the wrath of the Lord kindled against the people. And the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. And he called the name of that place Kibath Ratava, because there they buried the people that lusted. And the people journeyed from Kibath Ratava unto Hazan Arath and abode at Azatarath. So, what did lust cause to happen to the people? In this case, it was not nakedness, but in this case, they were lusting after, after the quail, after the after the meat that they longed for in Egypt. It was still lusting. Lusting is lusting. Lust is lust. Whether you lust after whether you lust after food that you should not eat, or you lust after people, things that doesn't belong to you, or you lust after after sexual immoral stuff. Lusting is lusting. But we see friends of mine where lusting led to the death of the people. Can we say amen? So, lusting is wrong, no matter where we put it or how we take it. 1 John chapter 2, verse 26. Let's go there. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 26. What does the word of God say to us? In 1 John 2 and verse 26, it tells us, These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. So friends, God wants us to be careful of those persons who seek to seduce us. And one of this is with their dressing. Oh, by the way, Kibratava, which represents, means graves of cravings. So we are warned against those who will seek to seduce us. <coughs> Why, friends of mine? Excuse me. Why? Because seduction leads to lusting. Lusting is sin. And sin leads to death. Matthew chapter 5 verse 28. Open your Bibles. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 28. The Bible says to us, friends of mine, But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his, in his what? In his heart. Very good. So friends of mine, it is important 
that as God's people, God's women in church, it is important that you dress properly. It is important that you dress appropriately to protect your sons, your fathers. Amen, everyone? Can we say amen? amen. Your brothers. Dressing. Skimpy dressing has become a norm. But God has not changed. Nakedness has become a style. But God has not changed. And sometimes they, they, they come to church. You can't even sit properly in church in order to, to prevent yourself from being exposed. Have you thought about it? God has not changed. And he desire that you be clothed. That is why friends of mine, after Adam and Eve sinned and God came to them, one of the things that God did was to cover them. God, he got rid of their fig leaves, their aprons from fig leaves. He got rid of it and he covered them with cloaks. And there's a constant warfare going on. God is seeking to cover while the, while the devil is seeking to expose. God is seeking to clothe us, but the devil is seeking to make us naked. Nakedness belongs to the devil. It's his way of exposing us. And so we must be careful. Proverbs chapter 6, 25, 26, and verse 32 said, Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take you with her eyelids. For by means of a warish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Now, friends of mine, can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Let's look deep into this, friends of mine. The Bible warned the men, so listen to me. Do not lust. Do not lust after her in your own heart, because you will be brought down to a piece of bread. Can you imagine, friends of mine, women in church dressing inappropriately, causing men to lose their hope, lose their focus, lose their God-given job, their God-given duty, and being brought down to just a piece of bread? How would you like to know that as God's daughter, you are responsible for that because of how you put yourself together? How would you like to know that? There are certain dress which is for the bedroom. Do you agree with that? There are certain dress, friends of mine, which is for the eyes of your husband only. Marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled. But warmongers and adulterers, God will judge. A friend of mine told me a story some time ago. Over 10 years ago, actually. She said, you know, Pastor, I wore a, a, a skirt. It was a mini skirt, a micro mini skirt. That I'll never dress that way again. I'll never wear that again. I was walking in my community on my way to church. And a young man Passing by the bar on the road, a young man called to me. And I looked at him, she said. And I, she said, I said to him, listen, don't you see that I'm not your type? And he looked at her and he said, if you are not my type, do not dress at the level of my price tag. In other words, if you are not my type, do not do not dress the way I can afford you. And that resonated with her for the rest of her life. Yes, friends of mine, God did not put us on this earth to kill. He placed us on this earth to bring souls to the Lord. Is that right, friends of mine? Remember, adultery is not only the literal act, but adultery is also lusting but whoso commits proverbs 6 verse 32 whoso committed adultery with a woman lagged understanding he that doeth it destroy his own what destroy it his own soul once again you need to ask yourself the question how many men have you murdered with your <coughs> excuse me skimpy dressing 
And then here's another question. How many men are sleeping with you in their minds because of your hellish fig leaves? Your hellish apron. It is important that we take note of these things. Amen, somebody? Do you agree with me? Now, let's go to the book of Revelation to understand something. In the book of Revelation, we see two women. How many women do we see? <coughs> Excuse me. How many women do we see? Two. two women. One, what does a woman represent, by the way? In prophecy. Church. <coughs> Excuse me? Church. Very good. A woman, a woman represents the church. Is that right? Let's go to Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Let's look at something important here. Revelation chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. In Revelation chapter 12, 1 to 3, the Bible tells us, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven horns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, to devour her child as soon as it was born. We know this prophecy well, friends of mine. But notice, friends, notice how this woman dressed. Is that right? This woman dressed to impress the Lord. This woman dressed code caused the devil to be against her, not with her. This woman's dress code caused the devil to dislike her, not to like her. This woman called this woman dress code caused the devil not to want to accommodate her on earth, not wanting to accommodate her. What am I saying to you, friends of mine? When we dress the way the devil desires us to dress, he has peace with us. False peace, that is. Because he knows that you're doing his work. You're doing his work of distracting men from their family. You're doing his work of distracting men from God's order for them. And so for that reason, he's cool. But when you dress against his way, he's against you. Go to Revelation 17. Let's compare that woman with another one. Revelation, Revelation chapter 17. Let's go there. Revelation chapter 17. And it says, friends of mine, reading from... Reading from verse 1, starting, from, starting at verse 1, There came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great war that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth had been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Notice her subject is what now? Her, her theme, sorry. Her theme is fornication. What's her theme? Fornication. Her theme is fornication. Now look at this now, friends of mine. Look at this. Don't miss it now. There, the Bible, let me go from verse 1 again because I want you to get it. There came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great war. So she's a what? Great war. That sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed what? Fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. This is a spiritual thing, but the physical is just as important. Listen to this now. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of name of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple, scarlet color, decked with gold, precious stone and pearls, 
having a golden cup in her hands, full of abomination, filthiness of her fornication. And up on her head was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of all that's an abomination of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great what? With great admiration. Notice what she has done, friends of mine. She has gone out there to destroy the men of the earth, the kings of the earth. It's interesting to know that her dress code represents fornication. Isn't that interesting, friends of mine? Her dress code represents fornication and she has gone out there and destroyed men. Isn't that interesting? Now, friends of mine, which woman are you? And which woman do you represent as you go about your business from day to day? And let me make it clear, friends of mine, we should dress properly in church and even out of church. We should understand that we are walking church. Who believe that? Say amen. amen. Yes, friends of mine. So, we do not only dress well on Sabbath, which some persons are still struggling to dress properly on Sabbath. Is that right? But we should dress well every time, every day, every hour, unless we are in communion or in our private chambers with our spouse. Is that right, everybody? Yes, friends of mine. So this woman many dress like her and they do not understand that her purpose is to destroy her purpose is to destroy men are you following that example the example of the woman of revelation 17 are you following the example of the woman of Revelation 12, God's Church. Now, let's go to some. Let's go somewhere else now. As I show you something, the devil's, the devil, it is the devil's intention to strip us of our clothes. You see, friends, whenever you dress appropriately, it represents the garment of Christ. It represents righteousness. Amen, everyone. It represents holiness. And so you can understand why it is the devil's intention to get rid of our clothes. Open your Bible, friends, to the book of Exodus chapter 32. I'm going to sum up the story for you in the interest of time. Pay close attention to this. Exodus chapter 32. In the book of Exodus chapter 32, let me sum it up. Aaron, the people called Aaron. to say, listen, we don't know where Moses is. Where was Moses? Moses was with God getting the commandment. We don't know where Moses is. He has gone for a long time. And so, get up, make us a calf. That we may worship that calf as God. And they rose up. Aaron obeyed them. They rose up. They made the golden calf. The story is there in Exodus 32. They worshipped the calf. They got up. And they played. They rose up to play, friends of mine. And did all sort of foolishness. And worshipped. The golden calf. Joshua, the warrior, up in the mountain with Moses said, Moses, man, Moses, there's some war going on. God's, Moses said, that doesn't sound like war. That sounds like some party. Some party going on. When Moses came down, friends of mine, verse 25, when Moses came down and saw what took place, Listen to what verse 25 said. When Moses saw that the people were naked, 
For Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Notice how nakedness is, a com is associated with shame. Then Moses stood in the gates of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come up unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his by his side, and go in and out from the gate uh, throughout the camp, and say, Every man is brother, every man is companion, and every man is neighbor. And they did just that. Listen to what the last part said, friends of mine. The Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Verse 33. Therefore, no, go now and I'm sorry, let me find that text again. Right. It says, Therefore, go now. Lead the people unto the place to which I have spoken unto thee. Mine angels shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin unto them. And the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron made. So you notice, friends of mine, they sinned. They had a big party celebrating. They got naked to their shame. The neighbors exposing themselves to the neighbors of whom they, they should have been ministering to. Are we together? We got to be careful about our apron dressing. It's fig leaves which can't cover us enough. Are we together? We got to be careful about our skimpy dressing because it is causing death. We got to be careful to dress the way the Lord requires us to dress. Who want to say amen with me? Yes, friends of mine, because it is important. Another story. A book of numbers. Let me see how best I can wrap it up. The children of Israel. Numbers 25, go there in the meantime for me. The children of Israel. We're on the brink of Jordan. They're about to cross Jordan. They have waited so long for this. From, excuse me, from slavery, you name it. They have waited so long. And now they have come to cross Jordan. After crossing Jordan, they will be in the promised land. Are you listening? And Balak, who did Balak call yeah. to curse them? Yeah. Balaam. I want you to listen to this carefully. Balak called Balaam to curse the children of Israel. Balaam went to curse them. Listen carefully. He went to curse them. And when he went to curse them, he could not curse them. Everything that came from his mouth was a blessing. Do you know why? Because there were no sin in Israel. When there's no sin in you, the curse can't att attract to anything. Are you listening? So there were no sin in them. And so, friends of mine, Balak, and you read about it in Revelation 2, Sorry, Balaam went home and said, listen to me. I need that money. Ba uh, Balaam was, was, was a wicked guy. He was, he allowed money to get the best of him. And he was, uh, he, he, he was, he was always lusting after filthy, lu filthy lucre. And so he said, listen to me. I know how to get the children of Israel to be cursed. For them to be cursed, they must sin. They must what? Sin. So he went back to Balak and said, listen to me. You can't curse them because they haven't done their God anything wrong. So what you need to do 
is to send women in the camp cause them to sin and after you cause them to sin then they will now turn against their God so this is exactly what Balak did with the plan of Balaam because Balaam was known in Israel they knew him to be a good guy it was easy for him to get them and listen to now friends of mine Exodus 20, Numbers 25 it says Israel abode in Shittim and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods the people did eat and bowed to their gods Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel and the Lord said unto Moses take all the heads of the people hang them up before the Lord against the sun that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel and Moses said unto the judges of Israel slay ye every man his men that join unto BLPR and friends of mine while they are weeping between the porch and the altar the plague is going on people are dying left right and center and while they are weeping between the, the, the porch and the altar one of the children of Israel came and brought his brethren unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of the congregation of the children of Israel who weep they're weeping between the, the, the tabernacle and the congregation and when Phineas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation, took a javelin in his hand, went after the man, and pierced him. So the plague was stayed. Do you see what happened here, friends of mine? The man got so caught up, it was, he was a priest, he was, sorry, he was a prince, a leader in Israel. He got so caught up in the adulterous and the fornication life that he didn't even realize that plague had taken over people were dying from plague while the plague is going on he's celebrating he's having fun that's what those sort of things does to men he he was dead to the urgency of the times and many today because of all the devil has caused many to dress like prostitutes The devil has caused many to be losing their souls and losing their lives. Look at the picture of a prostitute. And look at the picture of one going to church. There's hardly any difference. But God desires that we come apart. Is that right? God desire. You see, when God has found us, he desires that we remove our fig leaves. How did he get? How did God get uh quote the lamb that was slain the lamb that was slain was the coat that God used the coat of the lamb skin to make cloak for them clothing for them is dressing properly important is covering ourselves properly important yes it is because fig leaves aprons Dressing like you're wearing apron will kill people, kill men. But God didn't put you in the church to be murderers. He placed you in his church to be saviors, to save others, to win others to the kingdom of God. If, if your dress is a weapon of mass destruction, change your closet. Because God requires us to stand up for what is right. For what is holy and for what is honest and truthful in his sight. Amen. I pray that we be found faithful. I pray, friends of mine, that after today, everyone who hears this message will think about their dress. Maybe I cannot convince the world. But we are at church and this is a requirement from God himself. Amen. May we be found faithful. 
Let us stand as we pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for the message today. May we be found faithful. Lord, I pray for the, the women of Israel, not only at this church, but at all the churches in the world, that they will open their eyes to see the destruction that they are causing. May you help that our dress code will be in accordance with righteousness. We pray your forgiveness of our sins. We ask that you'll take away the fig leaves made from apron from us and cover us with your righteousness. Cover us with the garment of your salvation as you have promised us through Isaiah. Bless us and have mercy on us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you, my friends. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and give you his peace now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.